What's up friends, welcome back for another episode of True Detective. Really excited to continue on with this series. Had a great time with the first two episodes. Love the introduction to the main characters as well as all the other side characters. I think the character development so far has been fantastic for Marty and for Russ. I've loved getting a look into all the complicated morality and everything of their characters. And obviously if you watched the last episode, you know how much of a fan I've become of Rust and his character. I just love the way that he has evolved in my mind in such a short period of time and really learning to respect his character and his methods and definitely sympathize with all the terrible things that have happened in his life up to each of the points that we've seen in the show, both the past and the present. But the acting from Matthew McConaughey and from Woody Harrelson have been phenomenal and so it's great to see them act in a show like this as well as so many other great cast members like Michelle Monaghan, Alexander Daddario, just really a big movie level cast so it's awesome to see. Definitely makes it very entertaining to watch and obviously last time the case got a little bit farther along because they were able to find that abandoned church after meeting with everybody in that RV place and while they were there they found the big mural and so they're starting to find a little bit of a trail to whoever did all these things and so I'm interested to see where this leads them next because it'll probably be a little bit difficult to find anything since it was abandoned and kind of burned down but hopefully they'll have some sort of name or other location that they can connect to that place that will help them further the case but it'll be interesting to see the dynamic between Marty and Rust and how that changes in the future because it seems so far that Marty is kind of being a little bit of a detriment and they would be almost nowhere without Rust kind of pulling a lot of the weight. But just as my perceptions of the characters changed so much last episode, they could change again in this episode. And so excited for the ride that the show is going to take me on. Hopefully you guys are excited to watch along with me for this episode. And so without Without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into episode 3. Hoping we get at least one other monologue by Rust in this episode. As I mentioned last time, that was kind of my favorite moments of episode 2. Which is the stars and the wind between the stars. He knew you. This world is a veil. So they're scoping this guy out. Are they suspicious that he might be the one connected? Church burned down four months earlier. You can imagine what Mr. Charisma thought of that. You think the average IQ of this group is, huh? Can you see Texas up there on your high horse? <laughs> I love that he always calls them out for judgments. Some folks enjoy community, common good. But the common good's got to make up fairy tales and it's not good for anybody. Them being so contrasting in their ideologies makes for such interesting dialogue. You got to get together, tell yourself stories that violate every law of the universe just to get through the goddamn day. When you get to talking like this, Panicked. I wonder if Rust ever was religious and now he's just kind of more bitter towards it or if he's always held that belief. Linguistic anthropologists think religion is a language virus, dulls critical thinking. For a guy who sees no point in existence, you sure fret about it an awful lot. <laughs> he's got a bit of a point, I'll give him that. They may have very different ideologies, but they definitely are both good at kind of seeing through each other. Fulfillment closure and nothing's ever fulfilled until the very end and closure nothing is ever over is that relating to the case perhaps is there a bit of double meaning in that line that the case they solved in this past time was never actually over and it's just ongoing i don't remember the name came pretty regularly when we was in eunice i can't be sure we, we get around since then no, you're right. We saw her in Eunice. They definitely got those old-timey dresses right now. So back in Eunice, who painted the mural on the church wall? I children from our congregation painted it. I recognize that guy too. It's on the tip of my tongue where I know him from. He looks like he might be in Joker. Is that where he's from? You ever see her with anybody? Wasn't she with someone the one day? You remember? Oh man, what a cool frame. I love that. Love how it was kind of like atypical and they were on the very, very lower half end of the picture. He was hunched forward talking to her. Kind of a strange face, I think. Skin shiny around his jaw. What, like burn? 
So the guy that she went with was burned. So is that burn relating to the fire of the church? Bert, you spent two years in Angola, public exposure, whacking off outside of school. He gave me bad medicine. I, I, I didn't know. Oh man, hopefully he doesn't have to try and get too much information from this guy. He looks pretty skittish. Reminds me of a Paul Dano from Prisoner's character. Someone killed this girl, made a big show of it. Left a painting at the crime scene on one of your old churches. Why do you laugh at that? That seems like a very odd response to have. Looks like Rust was a bit suspicious too. There's such a desperate sense of entitlement, isn't it? Surely this is all for me. Me, 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 I, I. I'm so f important, right? You. <laughs> oh man, he just went off on him there for a second. He's back to being in the pessimistic perspective circle this episode. But obviously it's not like the first episode where I just think he's got a sour outlook. I understand where his belief system originates now. So I don't really judge him for his comments. I just find his ideology interesting. I could see this being some kind of retard job. Pays for it, gets ashamed, overreacts, tries to redeem the act you know that's not bad marty <laughs> nice giving marty some props it's one of the few compliments he's given him angola bloods caught him in the shower took his balls off with a razor they were sloppy about it oh gosh man that's some heavy stuff yikes i braced him himself literally i think we should move on a tall man well that could be bull no bert knew he saw the tall man too that was a great scene. Loved that. It's also fascinating going back to that discovery that Russ made, how he always picks up on such subtle things. Like just an embrace told him all he needed to know. You're obsessive. You're obsessive too, just not about the job. I keep things separate. Like the way I can have just one beer without needing 20. People incapable of guilt usually do have a good time. <laughs> oh, dang. I love that quote. Just drop the sledgehammer on him. You know the real difference between you and me? Denial. You are incapable of admitting doubt. Now that sounds like denial to me. I doubt that. <laughs> Oh my gosh, this man's quick. I love those little conversations that they have throughout the show. Does a great job of showing the internal side of their characters. We went where the case led us. But you took it up though, his serial theory. As arrogant as he could be, he was right. And that's how we got our man. So interesting that using those interviews, they've told us that they caught him. So now the suspense is no longer, will they catch him? It's who it's going to be. People get better. I think I am better. Maybe you just think you prefer it this way because it's what you're used to. Your life accommodates you. You don't have to be afraid of loss. She's got some wisdom too. I wonder if at some point in the show, they're going to catch this guy in the past and then we're going to move fully into the present or the future whenever the interviews are. What's going on, Russ? Brought the mower back. Mowed my yard? Yeah, so I needed mowing. Return the favor, borrowing. He's not going to be too happy about that. Marty, that is. Doesn't seem like he likes anybody infiltrating his life, but also just generally doesn't seem to like Rust. What the hell do you think you're doing, man? Just what do you think I'd be doing over here you're not around, Marty? I just don't ever want you mowing my lawn. I like mowing my lawn. I don't think this is about a lawn. I feel like it might be a bit of a euphemism for something else. I feel like there's parts of each of Marty and Russ's characters that resemble people who could have a breaking point and could motivate them to be capable of the dark stuff that they're investigating. Why'd you draw that? It makes something that should be nice ugly. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay, sweetie. He's just focused on the game during that interaction. He just got done telling Rust he separates things, keeps things organized, but he always seems to be distracted at whatever is going on currently. Oof. <laughs> Getting into some rough stuff there at her age. I'm concerned. She's just trying to get attention. Don't stop me. Talk. I'm close, Marty. Close to what? Mm -hmm. Leaving? Sounds like an ultimatum type phrase. I'm sorry for everything. I'm, I'm, for not being here, for taking all this for granted. What have you been doing, Marty? Ooh, is she starting to suspect his foul play that's been going on behind her back? Work, home, cases, I, um, I think I'm all. 
that's such a great scene right now, man. I love it. It's almost like Marty is using fate or whatever other beliefs he has to kind of absolve himself from guilt or having to face the bad parts of his life. You're not bad. It's not you. There's a weight. And it's got his fish hooks in your heart and your soul. Hey, he's got a burn on him. Matches the description. You are not flawed. We don't choose our feelings. There's grace in this world, and there's forgiveness for all. But you have to ask for it. That's interesting that he's using the thing that he was mocking earlier as an interview tactic. Please just tell me what to say. I want to con. I want to confess. <laughs> He shake his head because he didn't think that's who it was. Seemed like he was ready to confess. Maybe it was just because his attitude didn't match the persona of someone that was killing girls. Oh, I never really found it that hard. You know, you just look him in the eyes, the whole story's right there. But then again, I'm terrible with cards. What's he doing with his cup? Is he just cutting it for fun? How long do these interviews last with Marty and Rust? Because they've been interviewing them forever. I mean, I guess in real time, it wouldn't be that long. Oh, hey. Speak of the devil. Hey, Rust. Pardon me. <clears throat> hey, Maggie. Hi, Rust. Jennifer from Rustin. Nice to meet you. Are they trying to set him up with a girl? Let's go. It's time for my man Russ to get lucky. He doesn't have his personable side on tonight though. So what is synesthesia? It's a misalignment of synaptic receptors and triggers, alkalized colors, certain metallics. <laughs> oh my gosh, Marty can be a better wingman than that. Sometimes I'll see a color and it'll put a taste in my mouth, uh, a touch, a texture, a scent may put a note in my head. Oh no! Dang bro, his face, he's so dang jealous. He's more concerned about her than his own wife. Oh, she is coming to talk with him. It's not like he can tell her not to be with that dude. He's over there with his wife. Are you gonna go home with this guy? It's not really none of your business. Look, is this your way of trying to talk divorce? I don't want to marry you. That's my whole point. It's just run its course. Shoot, man. She just ended things like that. Marty's got a few scary characteristics that could get out of hand. He's borderline very controlling. But, I mean, he hasn't done anything too crazy yet. Besides the actual action of cheating on his wife. You asked about the interrogations. You want to know the truth? I've never been in a room more than ten minutes. I don't know whether the guy did it or not. How long does it take you? <laughs> I love it, man. He's so confident. I believe him, too. People give you rules. Rules describe the shape of things. Uh-oh. Something bad is gonna happen right here. He is in no condition to be talking to anybody. Get out! Stop it! Stop your you tell me or I'll have some nice board prison thing wearing your face for a con. Jeez, dude is fired up. Marty is an absolute oh loose cannon. Would have really done something like that. I'm not a psycho. <laughs> okay, guy, you just came in here and beat the crap out of him for a second. That's why I always said uh, I think Russ needed a family. It's boundaries. Boundaries are good. Oh my gosh, man, the contrast between that moment and that interview moment, just beautiful. I mentioned before that he had some tendencies that could be a little bit scary. Didn't think that he'd act on them so quick after I said that. It says here that her death was accidental, drowned. How's that hand? With a posterior. Shoot, they're related. Rust was exactly right in his prediction. This guy has been doing it before. I think we caught a break in the case, boss. I thought you were handing that off. We, we still got a few days. Two days, and then goes to task force, you two catch again. There we go, we're back on. Once again, Rust is the lifeblood of this partnership. Although it doesn't seem like Marty wants this case to be solved by them anyway. Seems like every chance he has, he wants to pass it off to the other people. I think man can love two women at once. They've switched drivers now. I don't think that man can love. The inadequacies of reality always set in. Dude's channeling his Lincoln commercial voice right now. Do you wonder ever you're a bad man? No, I don't wonder. World needs bad men. We keep the other bad men from the door. 
Man, I love those lines. At least Marty is starting to recognize some of the errors of his ways. So you, you got a full name on that Ladue boy? Reggie Ladue? What you boy looking all this up for? I was told she drowned in the flood. We're just looking for a man might have known her. So is this the suspect, the guy who they think is related to that other girl they found? He doesn't look too suspicious to me. I got comeback on your R&I. Reginald Ledoux. I only been coming here the last few months. Parish added it to my work order. Well, shoot, something must have happened big time then for Marty to get him out of there that quick. He's just talking to that dude. Reggie Ledoux skipped parole eight months ago. And guess who his cellmate was the last four months? Charlie Lang. I gotta give you this one. Wow, they found it. Or found him, I should say. That feels like a pretty big breakthrough. I mean, I assume it's him because it seems like everything matches up. I need an all-state APB on one Reginald Ledoux. R and I came back with info. All U.S. Marshals and Highway Patrol be advised. Detain on site. I like this, man. This is the first time it's gotten a little bit intense. They've been hot on the trail of somebody. Come on, man. You, you want to ask me? Ask, God damn it. You ever been in a gunfight? No. But how the f are you gonna know what I'm talking about? Gosh, well, something's going to go down then. I like that they use that as kind of like a suspense building technique by telling us what might happen, giving us a hint, and so it puts us on edge. This is what I'm talking about. You look in their eyes, even in a picture. Doesn't matter if they're dead or alive, you can still read them. So freaking captivating, man. Love all the little subtle camera choices as well. All your hate, all your memory, all your pain. It was all the same dream that you had inside a locked room. A dream about being a person. Oh my gosh, phenomenal! That's what I was waiting for and hoping for in this episode was another fantastic monologue moment from Rust. And thankfully it gave it to me. Bro, what is this dude? Is it just gonna stop right there? What? Yo, it can't leave me hanging like that, dude. Whoever that was is freaky looking. Is that who they were looking for? That Ledoux guy? Maybe it didn't need to show it to us because it already told us a little bit about what happened. It just needed to show us who it was. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the guy who did it because whatever he was doing looked mad weird. That was such a great episode though. Definitely, I mean, there's only been three now. Now, but that's definitely my favorite of the three so far. Well, we may have finally met the killer from that original case and from the other one that Rust was able to dig up this episode. And he looks like quite the character, so I don't know if that little tease at the end is going to be the only kind of shot we get of him or scene with him or if it's going to continue over into episode four and we'll see more of his character and what happened when Rust and Marty showed up there but I'm very very intrigued to see the story continue obviously another great episode I've said it so much but love the pacing of this one I felt like it was the best as far as just flowing from everything not that the first two episodes weren't good because they were but this one I feel like just elevated all the different filmmaking aspects to a whole new level combine that with another home run in a rust monologue and you've got the recipe for success with that episode and this one also gave us a bit of a deeper look at what Marty is currently struggling with we saw him blow up at the guy Alexandra Daddario's character was with and so that tendency does not bode well for the future and makes me kind of apprehensive of his personality in certain scenes and it's definitely not the kind of response you need to have if you're going to be dealing with the cases like they are and I didn't get to really mention it much during the episode but I love the way that the show takes issues that aren't really issues in people's lives but turns them into kind of character flaws or detriments if you will like a family wife and kids you wouldn't think that would be a detriment or anything like that you'd think that'd be a strong part of someone's character but in this show it's a hindrance to marty and his progression and character traits whereas rust being by himself and being out of any sort of relationships or commitments it's actually benefiting him in this and so i like that the show's story and characters aren't taking 
a really traditional style or direction because it definitely makes it feel a lot more fresh and interesting and so it's definitely giving me a unique experience in that department so far but really loved the quality of the camera angles and the lighting and camera movements and everything in this episode feel like it added to a lot of scenes just really subtle things that are either hard to explain or i can't name them all in the moment because there to be too many but just little subtle pushes or just the way that certain shots are composed all those little things kind of add to a feeling or a mood that just goes beyond what actors or dialogue could do for you we also got introduced to a lot of new characters in this episode and I don't know which characters are just going to be brief appearances or if we're going to have certain people pop back up into future episodes but we obviously got introduced to that new preacher and his congregation and we met that guy who was in the intro and so I don't know if that's the only time we'll see them and we also got introduced to Maggie's friend but I don't know if there's going to be anything there because it seems like Rust is not very interested in pursuing anybody right now he's very laser focused on the case which is kind of the opposite of Marty who is not laser focused in pretty much any of his life circumstances and positions because in almost every scene we saw him in in this episode he was distracted by something else when his daughter is confessing stuff that happened at school he's watching the TV when they're dancing He's focused on Alexandra Daddario, and so hopefully he can find it in him to kind of lock in a bit to the case going forward, because I'm sure once they get deeper into things, Rust wouldn't be able to just handle all the work himself, as he's mostly been doing so far. But really enjoying the show. Hopefully you guys enjoyed watching this episode with me, and looking forward to experiencing episode 4 with you all next time. And so until then, I'll see you all later. Peace. Peace.